he been working. He, he say he trying to get me hooked up. But before we get started, y'all know what it is. Y'all got to put it in the city and the state. That's right, the city and state where you're joining us from, all right? Let us know where you're tapping in from because, you know, Tallboy want to know who, who watching, who hanging out. And, uh, uh-oh, he ain't even got it up on the screen. There it go, there it go. Yeah, put, put me on the screen, tall boy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, anyway, we back to regular schedule business. We got Pierre Kelly in the building. Hit the spot, 1006, and Mama D was first. Oh, yeah, Mama D in the building. What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up, y'all? All right, now look. Now, we got some topics that we need to talk about. It's not going to be a long show, but we're going to just get some things off our chest, all right? So, we got about a minute and 19 seconds before we go live. Tall boy, hit that record button, man. You know you can't be messing up. You, you can't be doing that, tall boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Get him right, tall boy. Get him right. Get him right. Yeah. TBJ in the building. How was y'all's week? All right. Evening, everyone from Spotwood, New Jersey, says Sean James. Sean James. And that's LeBron James' cousin, y'all. Y'all know how he roll. You know, you know how he roll. Let me see if we can get it back on the screen. We got 50 seconds before we go live. Come on, TBJ. Tall boy, get it right, man. Get these folks' names on the screen. Come on. Yeah, what they say? We got 30 seconds, y'all. We got 30 seconds before we go ahead and get this thing right. Hey. Spotwood, New Jersey. Yeah, and we got Bartlett, Tennessee in the building. And we got Decatur, where is Greater? Pierre Kelly over there. And then who we got? We got two people up there? Who up that way? Uh, we got Sean James and we got Lisa Maria. They in the building, y'all. But guess what? We're going to see y'all on the other side, all right? Tall boy got some work to do. See you on the other side, y'all. Y'all ready? Let's go. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? It's another week of the Lab Tech Show. You know how we do. We made it. It's another week. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shout out to all the people that's in the building that said that they're going to support. That's what's up. Mama D was saying she was first. Pierre Kelly, Sean James. That's LeBron James' cousin, y'all. He ain't going to tell nobody that, all right? I'm just saying he ain't going to tell nobody. And then uh, we also got Revis in the building, and there's going to be some other people that's going to be joining us shortly. So once again, it's just another week of us just breaking down and simplifying technology in a language that you can understand, all right? That's what we want to do. We just want to simplify it. We want you to have fun, and we want you to walk away saying, you know what? I learned something. So we got a couple things that we want to discuss before we really jump off into the show. Uh, TBJ has some rules for you. Um, we're going to recap or tell you what we're going to be discussing, and we're going to find out where Revis is. All right, so let's see if we can get this all going the way it's supposed to be. So let me see. Can I get this right? All right, so there it is. We got, uh, let's see, we got ways, new features. We got uh, Google Wallet has some things that they're getting ready to do. And then also Airbnb's new policy. That's right. Airbnb's new policy. So, and then we got this word of the day. I was calling it cacophony, but it's called cacophony, cacophony, cacophony. Yeah, there it is. Cacophony. There it is. Cacophony. But you know, Revis is going to break all of that down momentarily and tell you how it works. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, we got some rules that we want to discuss real quick of the show. So let me see if I can get TBJ on the screen. Let me see if he's around and he want to act right. Uh. Uh-oh. How y'all doing, y'all? TBJ in the building. <laughs> 
Cause you know what? I'm gonna get Reavers to take over with me. You know, you know how we do this, man. You know, we we, we sliding in the DMs and all that. I'm growing up, y'all. I'm growing up. But look, this is how you can participate. You can watch on your phone or your TV, all right? You can watch on your phone or your TV. Now, we prefer you watch on both, but if you're watching on your phone, you can comment with us, all right? You can comment on your phone. We need you to be authentic. We need you to keep it real. And then also, uh, we want you to embrace this technology because it's happening whether you like it or not, all right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. They're going to roll it out whether you like it or not. So either you pay attention and you say, I got you, or... You just be like, I don't understand, y'all. Why, why? But Tallboy and TBJ and Revis, we try to tell y'all. So look, embrace this technology, all right? And if you're watching on another uh, platform, make sure you come over to the YouTube's. That's right, it's called the YouTube's The Lab Tech Show. Tell two or three people, The Lab Tech Show. That's your best friend. That's your new channel. That's the station you be watching all the time. Come on, y'all. Join the movement. Your boy, your boy TBJ is wilding out, man. I don't know what to say about that, man. Um, so, yeah, please, if you're watching on another platform, please feel free to come on over here. I know we're streaming on multiple platforms, but if you would like to interact with us in real time, this is the best way to go about doing it by coming over to the Lab Tech Show, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Let me see. Do we have uh, any comments here? Uh, Mama D say, there's my man, TBJ. Yeah, okay, Sammy Superstar in the building. Okay, he says, hey, everyone. And then we also got, uh, let's see, please observe the rules while chatting. Yeah, okay, see, Pierre Kelly, I might need to make you an administrator, a moderator, or something like that. Let me see, Sean James in the building. He says he's uh, tapping in from Spotwood, New Jersey. And uh, uh, Pierre Kelly said he's tapping in from Bartlett, Tennessee. So don't forget to put in the city and state where you are watching from. Let us know where you're joining us from. Well, we definitely would appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. So let's see who we have here. And then we're going to go ahead and tap into uh, our, our a lot of people's favorite segment. Let's see who we got up there. We got Mama D. I don't know what she doing up there in Wisconsin. I know she ain't down there. And then uh, Anna Marie, uh, Florida. I don't know what's going on. Pierre Kelly said he's in Chattanooga. And then Sean James said he was in Spotwood, New Jersey. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well, we got a thing. That's right. Tallboy got a thing. And uh, he said, you know what, uh, Revis, we would love for you to partake in what we're doing over here. And he he is really just taking it by storm. You know what I'm saying? He's taking this thing by storm. And uh, he is self-proclaimed professor now. I don't, hey, y'all called him that. But we about to find out. Where's Revis? He's somewhere in the United States, from L.A. to New York. Where are you, Revis? Don't forget to honk the horn. TBJ in the building. What's up? What's up, Revis? <laughs> this is our segment right here. This is our segment. This is what we do over here, man. We got a big word today, man. But we, before we tap into this big word, we need to find out where you at, man. What's up with you? I am in Natalia, Texas. Natalia? That's a woman's name. Who you know over there? Who you sliding in the DM with? Oh, my goodness. Uh, unfortunately, it's another one of them little towns. Uh, I am south of San Antonio and north of Laredo. Okay, all right. Uh, north of Laredo, south of where? San Antonio. Oh, okay. That's where that big boy, Victor Wimbanyanya, is at. Yeah. Have you seen him play yet? Uh, uh, but San Antonio is like uh, 20 minutes from here. Oh, okay. So you right on the outskirts. You're in a suburb. That's what you said? Uh, no, I'm in the country. <laughs> they got country in, in, in San Antonio? Okay. In, in Texas? In Texas. Okay, in Texas. All right. Well, we got this, uh, uh, we, we, we got this word, this big word. That's right. This big word. I ain't never heard of this one. And Tallboy said, what? He was saying it wrong all day. But, uh, it's called cacophony. That's right. Cacophony. Uh, you want to, we're going to give you a sentence and we're going to give you a definition and you're going to break it down. Can you do that for us? Oh, yes. Okay. I know you've been waiting all day for this one. All right, let's let's see what we got. 
Uh, cacophony, uh, they say, is a mixture of loud and usually harsh, unpleasant sounds. Cacophony can also refer to an incongruous and chaotic mixture. The way the sentence reads, Revis, the sounds of shouting added to the cacophony on the streets. And another sentence goes, a cacophony of aromas wafted through the air. Cacophony. Break it down, Revis. Well, being a truck driver and breaking this down in truck driver terms, we should get uninterrupted sleep anywhere from six to eight hours. And I'm at a truck stop right now, and it is over 100 degrees down here. And so we have to run the truck. And there's no problem with running the truck. It's who parks next to you. So when I park, I try to park where there's just a regular trailer on the left side, a regular trailer on the right side. But every once in the world, we got to throw a cacophony in the business. And a reefer trailer will be on the side of us. And you guys aren't familiar with a reefer, but a reefer is not what you smoke. It is a refrigeration unit, and that thing has to keep the product inside of it frozen or sometimes cold. So when it gets to a certain temperature, boy, when that thing starts up, that loud mixture of noise and that engine on that reefer unit, ooh, it starts a cacophony out of this world. And so that uninterrupted sleep, gets interrupted. So cacophony has to do with a mixture of loud loud noises that's unpleasant sounds. And let me tell you something, I can deal with the running of the truck, but I cannot deal with the dang reefer unit parking next to me. And that thing that that thing's like hearing a chainsaw next to you. Okay, so you saying it's a big old truck that make loud noises when it when it pull up next to you when you trying to sleep. That's a cacophony. Yeah, it's the trailer though. The trailer has an engine on it that keeps the stuff inside either frozen or cold. Okay. And so it has to cut on once it reaches a certain temperature. And when it does, it's like a chainsaw. Ah, so the trailer making all these noises and you can't sleep. But you gotta have so many hours of sleep or off the road, so it messes with your, with, with how you move around. Exactly, cause you'd be tired as heck if you can't get no sleep. Ah, yeah, and it's hard to find parking spots out there at the truck stops, right? Uh, after a certain time, yes. Okay. Right now, I'm looking at about five or six spots right now. That's it. Okay. So it's a mixture of loud and usually harsh, unpleasant sounds. So this cacophony of a trailer is messing up your sleep, is giving you these loud noises, and you don't like it. That's what you're saying. No truck driver like it. The thing about it is uh, if the people that drive the reefer trucks, they're used to it. Have you ever so drawn one? it cuts one? on and cut off, it doesn't bother them. Have you ever drawn one before? Uh, when I first started, I used to drive a reefer. Oh, so you should be used to it then. You just didn't like it. Oh, no, no, you never get used to that. Yeah, I can't never get used to that. I haven't driven one of those in like 16 years. Ah, oh, okay, you a, you a seasoned driver. Okay, all right, cacophony. I like it. All right, I think you did all right, Revis, but uh, we're going to have to ask the audience how do they think you did, all right? So... Um, if you're on your phone, let us know how did Revis do on the word of the day. One, Professor Revis, you did that. Two, this breakdown was not it. Maybe next week. Number three, I need you to use this. I need to use this one, Professor Revis. Or four, I will let you slide this week. One, two, three, or four. Let us know in the comments how did Professor Revis do 
on the word of the day. All right, let us know in the comments, y'all. He, he said he driven one of them things, but he don't like them. He don't like to sleep. Yeah, he, he want to sleep. He don't want to hear the noise. Let us know in the comments. One, two, three, or four. How did Revis do on the word of the day? Uh, uh, Professor Revis, um, you got anything else going on in your world that we need to know about? Uh, well, I'm about to head up out of this heat and go up to where it's a little cooler at up in uh, Illinois. A little cooler. Is it snowing up that way? No, it's not snowing. Uh, I should run into some rain probably tomorrow or Friday. Okay. All right. All right. Um, well, the, the, the people are speaking, man, and they're going to say, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to let you slide this week. I don't know what you got going on. I don't think they think it was a good description, but because it was a big word, Professor Revis, they gonna let you slide. Cause you've been doing good. You you you've been like two, three cacophony in a row. Is noise and that's a, look at cacophony is noise, and that's exactly what that reefer unit does. It makes a lot of noise. Okay. All right, well, we're going to let it go. Anything else you want to go uh, say? You want to hang out with Tallboy? You going to ride out? But anything you want to say before we end this segment? Well, I'm actually going to be driving about one thirty in the morning, so, oh, no, yeah. I got to get some rest today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, get your rest. Hopefully there ain't no uh, reefer trucks over there giving you some cacophonies. Uh-oh, I said oh, the word of the day. Watch out yes, there now. You, yes, you did. Hey. I just hope that one of the trucks next to me don't go anywhere. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. They don't they leave. They pull off, and, you, and it, the reefer unit parks next to me. I'm going to open up the window, and I'm going to holler, cacophony. Cacophony. Ah, they're going to be like, what in the world? What the hell he say? They're going to be like, oh, man, um, th this is what they're going to say. They're going to say, if you say cacophony. That's suspicious. That's what they're going to say. All right, Revis, we're going to let you go, all right? <laughs> all right, fam. You guys have a good one. All right. Cacophony is the word of the day. Like uh, what you say, yeah, Revis? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Ah, oh, yeah. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. All right. Revis said the word was cacophony. All right. Back to you, tall boy. All right, guys, cacophony, that's our word of the day, all right? And y'all said that Revis, uh, once again, this is y'all's thing. You said you're going to let him slide this week. I mean, hey, it's a reefer truck. I th When he said reefer, I was thinking he was talking about the, the truck got some smells that, you know, might have an aroma that some people may like, but the police don't like, you know? So that's what I was thinking. But he said, no, it makes loud noises, all right? So got to figure that part out. Um, there is a poll that I would like you uh, uh, tap into. We do not have a stash stock party uh, of the evening. So uh, so since we don't have a stash stock party of the evening, we do have a poll today. All right. So it's already in the YouTube, but you can actually participate here if you like. But uh, they've been talking about how the House um, has passed saying that they want to ban the, uh, TikTok or ban the company ByteDance from uh, having TikTok in the United States. So the question that I have for you is, do you think ByteDance should be forced to sell TikTok? On your phone, let us know. One, yes. Would China let us do this in their country? Two, no. They have a great business model. Nothing is wrong here. Three, the government wants to control the situation. Four, China is being sneaky and it must be stopped or five. I have no idea what's going on. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Let us know in the comments. Do you think ByteDance should be forced to sell TikTok? All right. So for the ones who are not familiar with what's going on, TikTok is uh, another competing app with all the other social media platforms. And basically what they're saying is um, what they're saying is because it's using uh because it's a company based in china they're basically selling the secrets or they're you know they're accessing your data that's what they're doing and they could easily sell it to the chinese government we have an election coming up so that might be one of the contributing factors thinking that they may sway the vote uh by initiating their propaganda and then the other argument is hey the content that they allow in the algorithms to show in China is all about education and moving the culture forward. But then the algorithm in the United States 
it's kind of like, uh-uh, we're going to allow y'all to dance, make a fool of yourselves, and, you know, we're going to allow you to do some things, but we're only going to promote the things that we think that are going to basically dumb you down. Whereas China, their side is like, uh, you don't even see that on their side. So the question is, do you think uh, ByteDance should be forced to sell? Let's see what you guys say in the comments. Uh, the majority says, yes, would China let us do this in their country? Um, then some people are saying the government wants to control the situation and some other people are saying China is being sneaky and it must be stopped. Huh? Well, I mean, everybody is right to their opinion. I'm just giving you a chance to let out your frustration or let us know your opinion and you can go from there. All right. So let's go ahead and get into these articles for the evening. And, uh, let's see where we at tall boy. Come on back on the screen. There we go. Uh, we got some things that we need to talk about, and um, we're going to start with uh, how do you drive? Do, do you use um, a navigational system when you drive? That, that's the question that I have for you. Do, do you use a navigational system when you drive? Um, and if you do, are you more familiar with Google Maps, or do you use Waze? All right. Well, I'm a big fan of Waze, and they just released some features and I thought that this would be kind of cool to kind of share with you some of the things that are going on over here because um, if you use Waze, these might be some useful features that may be good for you to use. Or you might say, I'm on Google Maps, but maybe I might be willing to make that switch. So this is what I'm talking about. Waze could tempt you from Google Maps with their super useful driving alert. So they just released some new alerts and they're saying, hey, we want you to see what's going on. And they said uh, Waze basically got an update that will help you drive around more safely as well as let you know of any recent changes on the road. All right. And then this is also released on iOS and also on Android. Okay. So, and this is across the globe. Uh, but th they're saying that the rollout is not going to happen all at once. All right. They got six features that we're going to discuss and uh, they're also saying that the tool is currently making its way to users living in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and France. And they're saying that other countries will be able to do or be able to participate in this as well. All right. So what I'm showing here is, let's see, what do we have? Um, they're saying navigating the world. All right. So nav navigate, navigating the world. What is that one? They're saying that this Next set of features is scheduled to launch down the line. Normally, whenever someone opens a navigation app, it becomes uh, it's because they want to get to their destination faster. And they're saying most drivers can agree that finding a place to park in a city, uh, park in a city can be an utter nightmare to make find to make finding the sweet spot less stressful. Waze is teaming up with a software company, Flash, to provide information on parking garages. The app will let you uh, will tell you how much it costs to park at a location, whether it's covered or open to the elements, and if there's valet and more. All right, and then they're saying that um, it will provide info on a select group of thirty thousand parking garages across major cities in the United States and in Canada. So basically, Waze is saying I'm gonna help you with your parking. <laughs> they're gonna say I'm gonna help you find your parking, and uh, you should be good to go there. All right. And then they're also saying that, um, let's see, what else? They're saying that, I'm missing something here. Um, did I miss something? No, I didn't. All right, they're saying that the last feature will teach people how to navigate a roundabout. Way states that they'll point out when to enter and when to switch lanes and where to exit. Android users will receive the roundabout tool later this month. And iPhone owners will have to wait until later in the year to get the same upgrade. And basically, that's what's going on from there. They're saying that um, the favorite update of out of the bunch has to be Waze deciding it a shout out upcoming changes to speed limits uh, in case they're about uh, to suddenly decrease. So I don't know if you've ever been on the freeway where it's 55 and then all of a sudden it drops down to 45 or maybe it might be 45 and then it might go to 65. So that's one of them. Um, they're also saying that uh, it's pretty helpful. It's a pretty helpful tool when you want to avoid getting caught in a speed trap. 
And then they're saying that developers are expanding uh, hazard detection to include speed bumps, sharp turns, and toll booths. The speed limit warnings as well as the hazard detection upgrade are currently rolling out to all users. All right. So that's what's going on with that. With that. All right. So um, another feature that they're rolling out is they're saying that uh, the app will notify you in advance of any emergency vehicles on your route. And that way you'll know when to shift lanes or to take a detour. This tool is currently making its way only in U.S., Canada and Mexico and France. And uh, so that's kind of what's going on. So I think I'm slightly missed some things here, but here we go. Once again, they will notify you in advance of emergency vehicles on your route. You put that back on the screen. Um, they will also say uh, it will shout out upcoming speed limit changes and also decreases. So whether it goes up or it decreases. And then also it's saying that they will also develop um, the developers are expanding hazard detection to include speed bumps, sharp turns, and toll booths, and the speed limit warnings, as well as other hazard detections. And then also, um, they're saying that it will be given the option to take a more scenic route. So they're saying whenever someone opens a navigation app, it's because they want to get to their destination fast. Well, you'll be given the option to take a more scenic route. And that may not be the fastest way to get home, but at least you'll have the opportunity to take your favorite path instead. Okay. So you can either go sit in traffic or you can say, let me learn a different route. All right. So that's kind of what's going on with that. And then lastly, um, they were telling us about the parking garages that you would be able to find out where the parking garages are and let you know um, if they have elements of uh, covered or uncovered parking or if they have valet. And then lastly, they will help you navigate uh, the roundabouts, all right? So Waze states that they'll point out when to enter and when to switch lanes and also where to exit, all right? Android users will receive this roundabout later this month, and iPhone users have to wait a little bit longer, all right? So that's kind of what's going on with that situation there. Um, let me ask you in the comments, what do you think of this new feature? Um, there's about six features that are there. Uh, what do you think of Waze's new features? One, this is nice. I can't wait to use these features. Two, I like my current navigation system. No need to change. Three, it's not I was not familiar with Waze. I will explore more. Or four, I don't use Waze, so I can't speak on it. One, two, three, or four. Let me know in the comments what do you think of Waze's new feature, all right? Um, let's see, what do we have here? Awesome Wood Thing says traffic alerts. That's right, traffic alerts. Um... Let's see, the um, Waze is the best though, says Awesome Wood Things. And then also, Apple Maps works for me. Okay, and uh, Google Maps says Sheila Baker. Everybody's got their own professional, you know, opinion on, you know, Google Maps. Because what I'm saying, I see DoorDash drivers or I see um, Uber and Lyft drivers. They like Google Maps for whatever reason. But my thing is... Ways let you know when the police are hiding, they're hidden. They kind of, I mean, they show you that they're in the area. So that means to slow down. And that doesn't mean that it's 99 or 100% accurate. It just lets you know just slow down because you know that there's a cop in the area if you're floating on the freeway. Um, so I, I don't know. I think the features of letting you know about parking, I think the features of letting you know about um, the roundabouts and then also the increase and decrease changes. Um, with the voice activation, uh, depending on the voice, I think that that would be good. Your comments, let's see, what did you say? You said, I don't use Waze, so I can't speak on it. I ain't mad at you. I understand. And the others are like, uh, this is nice. I can't wait to use these features. All right, that, that, that's what it is. There's no harm. There's no foul with that. And uh, didn't Google buy Waze? Yes, they did. Um, yeah, but these are some nice updates, says Sean James. Yeah, these are some great updates. And like I said, if you use this app, I think that this would be definitely beneficial to you or be beneficial for you. All right. So I, I do think that that's good and it's a trusted app. And, uh, like I said, it will save you a ticket or two. <laughs> now, if you're in Ohio or something like that, you know, you got to do the speed limit. Uh, cause they like, as soon as you pass one, you better not speed up cause you will get a ticket in Ohio. All right. I'm just giving you a heads up on that one. All right. We got another story that we would like to talk about. Um, let's see. 
this has been some news that they've been discussing. Um, Airbnb, they've been doing some, I don't know what's going on with them. Um, Airbnb is saying, hey, they made a big announcement on Monday that is banning the use of indoor security cameras and is listed properties globally. All right. So they they said you can't if you own or you rent out an Airbnb, you can't have this. Now, this is probably only for a small amount of people. And this is probably for the nicer Airbnbs, not for the people that I don't know who puts cameras in outside of the common areas such as, you know, outside by the garage or, you know, your ring camera. But some people are actually kind of creepy and they actually put cameras like in the hallways. They actually put them in the kitchen and they just want to make sure that their house is protected. And Waze is saying, I mean, excuse me, Airbnb is saying, no, we you can't do that no more. All right. And this is what I mean by that. Um, they're saying here, I'm just trying to get this article to come down. There you go. Um, it said it said it's making the move as part of the efforts to simplify its policy on security cameras and other devices, and they continue to prior t- prioritize the privacy of our community. All right, and they're also saying that the ban on indoor cameras will come into effect on April 30th. So basically, right after spring break, there will be no more cameras. All right, Airbnb had all had always allowed the use of indoor cameras for security purposes but only in common areas such as hallways and living rooms and never in a sensitive location such as bedrooms or bathrooms. And additionally, the accommodation listing had to clearly indicate that the cameras were in place and the devices had to be clearly visible. Now the company said that as most listings on Airbnb do not report having security cameras, the new policy is likely to affect a small number of listings on its platform. Now, the cameras inside of Airbnb properties have always been contentious, has been a contentious issue, especially because over the years, there have been multiple reports of guests finding hidden cameras, sometimes in the bedroom and the bathroom. And I think that's the part where a lot of people are, are having problems and they're complaining, saying that it's in the bathroom or I found it in the wall. And, you know, that's kind of creepy. All right. And I think the people that are doing that, they should be kicked off the app and they should not be able to use uh, Airbnb service. But that's just my personal opinion. All right. They're saying um, Airbnb um, said that outdoor devices like doorbell cameras will continue to be permitted, though hosts will have to disclose the presence and general location of any outdoor cameras before a guest can book. All right. And then they're also saying, uh, To be clear, the outdoor cameras will also be prohibited from capturing video from a property's indoor spaces. So you can record outside of you walking up, ringing the doorbell, or you going into the lockbox key, but that camera cannot show anything inside of the home, all right? And they say you can still have alarms. They can be used in common areas, but hosts must disclose the presence. And all they're really saying here in this article is you just got to let folks know that there's an alarm. You got to let folks know that the cameras are outside and there cannot be any hidden cameras. All right. And basically Airbnb is basically saying that our goal was to create a new clear rules that provide our community with greater clarity about what to expect, you know, at Airbnb. All right. And these changes were made in consultation with our guests, hosts and privacy experts, and we'll continue to seek feedback to help ensure policies work for our global community. Now, I guess my question is, what do you think of that? Is, is that good or, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Let, let, let me know. And this is not a one, two, three, four, five. What, what are your thoughts? You put your comments, whatever you want to write, we'll see the tiles come up on the screen. Uh, is Airbnb justified in making the, these, <laughs> this new rule to eliminate cameras in the home? Is Airbnb justified in making this new rule to eliminate cameras in the home. Let us know in the comments. Man, today's a rough day. Tall boy's not spelling the words right, but we won't judge me. We won't judge me. Let us know. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I mean, my thought process on all of this is, hey, it is what it is. Um, no cameras equal good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many of you guys are actually watching um, I don't know how many of you guys are actually watching or, or use or utilize Airbnb. I use it when I go out of the country. Um, 
and I've done multiple stays, if that makes sense, where I've either stayed with somebody and I've also done it to where I've had the place to myself. And so my thing was, I didn't really feel like I had anything to hide. But at the same token, these are things that, you know, women should be definitely care for or, you know, be concerned about or even people that have children because you don't know, you don't want somebody creepy doing something crazy. Not for me, have not had that uh, chance. Um, don't use Airbnb often. Um, yes and no. They kind of need to see what's really going on, says Lisa Maria. And uh, I don't use Airbnb, says Mama D. No, I mean, I think the biggest thing is it's not about do they need to see what's going on. You opened up your door. Now, back when we were kids, right, when we were kids, it was always saying don't get in a stranger's car and you're not going to nobody's house that you don't know. But now technology has shifted and made things a little bit differently, right? To where we're getting in strangers' cars literally by using Lyft and Uber. And then we're also going into people's homes by using Verbo and using uh, Airbnb. So the way the older generation grew up, we were told, don't do these things. But now this new generation says, it's cool to do these things and we can make it cheaper than using a cab or utilizing a hotel. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. This is something that you should think about. Um, Sean James says, this should have been the standard for a while. It won't stop the hidden cameras and no information of how it will stop creeps. Now, my thing is, if it's caught and you can document and you can verify that there is a camera there, my personal opinion is... He's somewhere in the United uh -oh. States, from L.A. to New uh -oh. York. What are we We're here? Yeah, uh, my, person, my personal opinion in, in this is, if, if this is found to be used that they have a camera and they're using it illegally, you should just kick them off the app. They can't do business with this platform anymore because I'm trusting this app to make sure that my safety and my concern, you know, that you're, you know, you're concerned about my safety. And this lets me know that the person who is utilizing this uh, camera in their home, they can't be trusted. And if I can prove then they should be banned from the app and they should not be able to have a listing, period. So that, that's just my thought process on that. Um, Sheila Baker says, I agree. <laughs> that's what's up. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Um, all right, so let's see, where are we at? We are here. Let's see, what do we have? Hey, everybody. Hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. It's called The Lab Tech Show. We're embracing technology in a language that you can understand, all right? So we would love for you to come hang out with us and be a part of the family, all right? Will you join us? We're trying to get to this 500 so we can get monetized over here. But we're building. And the goal is eventually to do our thing to where it's uh, not only nationwide, but it's also global. So we're building. So we want you to join us and be a part of the family. All right? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And then there's a little bell. Embrace it. We got you. Come on. It's called the Lab Tech Show. All right, guys. Um, before we get into this next article, and I really did not have a lot to report because the other things were really talking about TikTok and some other things that I did not think that you guys would probably care about. But I do want to let you know we did discuss about TBJ getting some merch, right? So we said we were going to get him some merch, and let's see what we got over here. TBJ in the building. What's up? Look what we got. TBJ in the building. You got to go to shop.tallboy.us, all right? Shop.tallboy.us. Man, we got some stuff for y'all. Come on now. Um, we got the TBJ in the building shirt, and then we got the TBJ got something to say shirt. Come on. We got something for you. Pull up on us. And it come in multiple colors. And then you know what? For the folks that say, I don't want no T-shirt, man, come on, man. That TBJ Journal. Oh, man, TBJ got something to say. Now, awesome wood things, we working on them coffee mugs because we know you said you like to drink coffee, all right? But we had to get it started somewhere, okay? So we got it started. Tallboy was working, and he said, you know what? We're going to get the TBJ Journal, and we're going to get them TBJ shirts, all right? TBJ in the building. What's up? <laughs> What's up? I know y'all like it. 
and they said, TVJ got something to say. Y'all like my brand? Y'all like my shirts? We were looking for something to say. But, you know, TVJ got something to say. That's, that, hey, we were saying it. We just couldn't figure it out. So we just put it on the shirt. Now, y'all got something to say. So when the ladies walk up on you fellas, they can say, TVJ ain't got something to say. They can be like, what he got to say? And then you can go ahead and say your lines. Ladies, if the man walk up to you and say, TVJ got something to say, you be like, stay out my business. I'm taking. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Come on. Pull up on me. Go ahead and get that merch, all right? Go ahead and get that merch. You see it? Look at it. Look at it. TVJ got something to say. All right? And then, uh, let me see. Tallboy said, uh, if you use code word, hook me up, TBJ, you gonna get 15% off, all right? Hook me up, TBJ, you gonna get 15%, all right? So don't forget, TBJ got something to say. Then we got the TB Journal. And then we also got the... Let me see, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? TBJ in the building. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Hook me up, TBJ is the promo code, all right? I'm trying to put y'all on. Hey, come get them deals, y'all. Come get them deals. Back to you, tall boy. Hey, I tried to help y'all out. TBJ said I had to give y'all a discount. He said, hey, since it's something new, we thought y'all might like it. We had different colors. We got purple, red, orange. Come on, I, I, I'm trying to look out for y'all. Y'all were saying y'all wanted merch, so I'm going to get y'all some merch, all right? So there it is. Uh, Mama D says, I love it. <laughs> y'all was asking for it. I said I was going to I said I was gonna hook you up. I just had to find the time to get it done, and uh, we got it done. That's what it is. All right, so uh, here we go. We got our last article over here, um, Google Wallet. That's right. Google Wallet is uh, doing some things. So if you're on Android, you might like this. I'm not sure if uh, you go to the movies anymore, but uh, what if you are taking a flight relatively soon? That's uh, so what I mean by that. They're saying that you can now add your movie tickets and your boarding passes in uh, in the Google wallet. All right, let's see how this article reads here. They said once a confirmation Email hits your Gmail inbox. The pass will show up in your wallet too. So, I mean, you know, you already got, got it on your phone. Why not use it? It's, it's Google. It's a Google platform, all right? Now let's use it. Let's see what they're talking about. They're saying uh, they re uh, released an update where Google Wallet, look at me, tongue twister, tongue tied and everything. An update was released to uh, for Google Wallet, and they said that they have further simplified the process of getting all your passes in one place. All right, so now, based off of this release notes for this week, uh, they said Google says movie tickets and boarding passes will now be surfaced automatically after purchase. So as long as the confirmation email has made it to the user's Gmail inbox, not your personal one, but your Gmail inbox, uh, they said that uh, it should be in there. Now, they said not every theater chain or airline just yet will have it, but they said... It's live for some, and more should be added in time. Now, Google, um, little by little, has been, you know, trying to make the wallet, you know, more useful and more better, right? So they're saying um, that wallet said for their passes, uh, for the people who have, like, a uh, Android watch or the Wear uh, operating system watch, they said you could use the smart watch, smart watch users could have easy access to their tickets from their wrists, and that includes boarding passes, event tickets, gym memberships, loyalty cards, and more. And they're saying, per the latest release notes, Google also added um, a way for users to manually archive most of their passes from either their smartphone or their smartwatch. Uh, and this, um, they said, if you want to archive it, these will be moved to a section called archive passes. So let's just say you forget or you're like, hey, I know I bought this ticket to this concert, right? And where was it? It's already in your phone. It's already on your watch. And, and it will be in your archive passes. That's basically what they're saying, all right? So um, this is a good feature here that you guys might want to tap into, take advantage of. And uh, if you use Google Wallet, this definitely is a good play, all right? So that's pretty much what it is um, for that. And uh, let's see. Um, 
Yeah, here we go. What do you think of this? Will you use Google Wallet? That's right. Will you use Google Wallet? Um, number one on your phone. Yes, I like it. Two, I have seen it on my phone, but I never paid it no attention. Three, no, I will continue using my method. Or four, these updates are nice. I need to use it more. One, two, three, or four. Let us know what you think of Google Wallet and their new updates. All right. Uh, let's see. I think that this is pretty cool. And then, uh, what is, oh, Stuart is pulling up on us. That's what's up. What's up, Stuart? Let us know in the comments. What do you think of Google wallet? All right. And their new updates. All right. That's what it is. Um, let's see. What else do we have here while we're working on that? Um, let's see. We did not have a lot to cover this week and that's good because everything does not have to always be some major updates or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, but we do have the brands and I do want you to check this out because this weekend I was working and I said, all right, we are now available. We're now available on, um, Spotify and Amazon music and YouTube podcasts. So I was literally doing some research this weekend. And if you use Spotify, if you use uh, Apple Music, or if you use uh, YouTube Music, you could literally search the Lab Tech Show, and you can uh, listen to this show or any of the previous shows from 2024 um, and moving forward. Um, they will be available on Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, and also YouTube Music or YouTube Podcast. All right, that's what it is. Uh, let's see, where's the brands? Where where is it at? I don't see it. I don't. I don't know what's going on here. Hey, it's the brands. Check us out. Tallboy.us, The Lab Tech Show, and your live production. Check us out. We got some great content over there. And if you're looking into getting into live streaming, if you're looking into uh, wanting to create a commercial, or if you want to just talk tech or you know a tech brand, join us at one of those respective brands, all right? And then also... If you're on Roku or Amazon Fire, check us out on TBE Media, all right? And then, like I said just a moment ago, we're now on Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube Music, all right? It's the brand. And then if you'd like to support Tallboy, there's the respective ways that you can support, all right? PayPal or Cash App. That's what it is. The brands. We're building, y'all. Look, remember when we first started? Look at where we are. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Hey, we here. That's what's up. All right, guys. Yeah, that's uh, what's going on over here. Um, it was a light show. Not much to really cover. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm open to answering um, if it's within reason. Uh, we know some people like Awesome Wood things. Yes, I'm going to call him out. He likes to ask some helium questions, and I know I don't have the answers to that. But if you guys have any tech questions that you're having some issues with, maybe I can, might be able to assist you. And uh, we can search it real fast and help you out. But uh, if not, then um, we can cancel or not cancel, but we can uh, stop here. But I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to uh, if you had any problems with any tech issues or if you had some things that you would like to discuss, let's have that conversation now. All right. We got a few minutes before the show ends. And I wanted to be able to give you guys that opportunity to have that feedback or have that one on one with me. All right. So. If you have a question or a comment, please let us know in the comments what it is, and I'll see if I can get it on the screen. Shout out to oh uh, Laura C Fitness. She's here. Hey, what's up, Laura? So if you guys have any tech questions, feel free to pull up on me and let me know, and let me know in the comments, and let's see if we can help you out with any tech issues that you may have, all right? We don't do this often. I bumped into our guy, Techie, and I'm going to see if I can get him on the show again. And uh, maybe we can do an Ask Techie, but right now it's an Ask Talk Boy. All right? That's what it is. If not, we can get TBJ and Tall Boy to see y'all next week, something like that. I'm going to give you a few minutes to put your comments in the uh, comment section, and we'll see if it's there. Outside of that, that's pretty much it. We got the brands. Tall Boy was working over the weekend. Um, we have blog content um, on the tall, excuse me, the Lab Tech Show website. So that's labtechshow.com. Um, there's blog content there, and there's also where you can watch the show on the website. And then, like I said, 
we're trying to find multiple platforms where this show is more easily accessible. All right. Um, question says awesome wood things. Let's see what is he saying. And I knew he would ask something first. Let's see. Um, what does he say? Awesome wood things says. Did you see Apple just rolled out a new emojis and one of them is a phoenix? Okay. Um, I not familiar with that. I was looking at on nine to five Mac. Um, awesome wood things, but I did not see that. I saw something emojis, but I did not think it was worth. Yeah, I don't think people really care about emojis. I'm not saying that they don't, but I didn't think it was newsworthy, so I didn't really read that article. Um, with what what with what they were doing. So I'm sorry. I will look into it this uh, tonight and see what they have going on. Um, you know, TBJ is the Mac person, not Tall Boy. You know how that is. Um, any other questions that we have? Any other questions? I'm going to cover the Google shutting down the podcast platform and Google pay service and would like to know your thoughts. Um, yeah, so that's so that was one of the reasons why Sean James, this is one of the reasons why I chose to start the podcast now because Google Podcast chose to shut down. This is a this is a move by Google. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to use YouTube music, right? Um, and they're trying to promote it. I am a YouTube music or a YouTube premium user. And I've been literally playing with this more than I have been with Spotify. Um, I had both services last year, but then I let the subscription go on Spotify and said YouTube is a global is a global um, platform. Not saying Spotify isn't, but it's a global platform and it has more reach in my personal opinion. And I think shutting down Google Podcasts and bringing the podcast over to YouTube Music, it's easily more searchable because I was not familiar with Google Podcasts, right? I wasn't familiar, but I was familiar with YouTube music and knowing that they shut it down and said, hey, come on over here and you can watch your or have your podcast over here. This makes more sense. And they can also do more brand deals or partner deals. And I thought that that was very beneficial as well. So, I mean, some of the bigger names are starting to get signed and then there's some new rollouts of making the interface a little bit better than what it was. And the Google, excuse me, the YouTube music podcast uh, user interface is not as smooth as, say, Spotify's, but they're trying to promote it and they're trying to make it bigger. So that's my thoughts on it. Um, YouTube music is good, but the channels seem different than Pandora. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's still in its infancy stages. Um, it, it's still in its infancy stages, so you have to be patient with it, just like you were patient with Pandora when they first came out, right? Um, and also Spotify. They're always constantly rolling out new features. Tidal just came out with something to where they were saying that they're going to uh, reduce their pricing. Um, and also still give you lossless audio, I want to say. If it's not lossless audio, they're giving you some type of hi-fi audio. Um, but you have to be patient with it. And they're saying that you can see the trend. Everything is going into YouTube right now. So if I can keep, why well, have it at Google Podcasts when I already have YouTube, YouTube TV, and then I'm also having YouTube music? Why well, have Google Podcasts? Just make everything YouTube, and now it's more it's a more familiar brand. Um, tall, uh, let's see, Pandora will play songs that are similar. Can YouTube Music do that? Yes. So for me, I will. So what I do is I have three different playlists: one, my chilling music; uh, two, my R and B music; and three, you know, um, let me see if I can do this. You know, I gotta have my gotta have my ratchet music, right? I gotta have it. Um, so what it will do is it will play my Glorilla, it'll play my Sexy Red, it'll play um, my Yo Gotti, and then all of a sudden it will find similar songs that will, they have, they'll tell you what's the next song coming up next. And when you look at the playlist, it's more of the similar artists, not necessarily that signed to the same label, but they'll find similar artists that would resonate with that voice. So if I'm finding an R&B song and I'm playing Prince, it will probably match it up in a playlist with Maxwell 
or Max, uh, put it in a playlist with um, Brian McKnight or, you know, whoever it may be. So it'll find a playlist that fits that that demographic and also probably the, the tone of what you're, look, uh, what you're listening to. Uh, let's see. Seems like YouTube music is playing a list of songs in a specific order. Am I crazy? Um, no. So basically they're creating their own playlist for you. And then you can go out and create your own playlist. So what you do is you just pick the artist and then you just click up next and then it's already have a play. They already have a playlist ready for you to go, go into. And then you can say, I want to save this into my, you know, my personal playlist, or let's just say you type in the artist again, it may be a, a whole nother playlist. This, that's what my findings have been. It's never really been the same playlist. If I hit that song. So right now, one of my favorite songs out right now is called Yeah Glow by Glorilla, right? Uh, she's a Memphis female rapper. She came out with this song. LeBron James endorsed it. And every time I listen to her, I look up her song. When I'm listening to it, the next song may come up and it's a similar artist, but it's never the same playlist, if that makes sense. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, YouTube music seems rigid, not not mixed up. Oh, well, like I said, it's in its beginning stages. Um, I think they've been around for a few years, but they're just now starting to heavily promote it. So I think YouTube music has something and uh, I think that they're going to just further develop what they have going on. Um, but like I said, um, awesome with things. Let's have a conversation. I'll show you what I see on my end. Um, I am a YouTube premium, um, user. So the cool thing about YouTube premium um, is that you don't watch commercials and you also on YouTube and you also get YouTube uh, music for free. And so for me, knowing that I'm always on YouTube, that's a benefit because I don't have to wait for that five seconds or I don't have to be in the good part of the video and then a commercial comes on. And then now I'm getting YouTube music as well. So you have to play with it. It's, and then they also do at the end of the year, an end of the year recap where they say the, this was the most played song that you had played. And then they'll give you your statistics. I thought that that was pretty cool that they had did that. Something similar to what Spotify does as well. Um, it seems like when I play <laughs> a lot of YouTube music questions, um, it seems like when I play uh, the 80s hits, it seems to be the same list of songs played in the same order. So for you... Just type in the artist. So just pick one artist instead of just picking 80s music. So pick an artist and then see if that switches it up for you because that's what has happened for me. Hopefully that'll help you out right there. All right. Well, looks like uh, we got what we needed. Uh, is there any other questions? Feel free to check out the merch. Uh, go to shop.tallboy.us. Check out the merch over there. We have some new additions. I definitely would like for you to uh, take advantage of that. Um, like I said, the whole goal was to get some merch up for TBJ. And uh, let's see. He said, I got it. I'll try that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what's up. No, I mean, and it's funny that you guys are talking about YouTube music because I have literally have been playing with this for the last uh, month and a half, two months. And just when I'm in the car, I'm just listening to YouTube music in my headphones. Um, I'm listening to... YouTube music before I go to bed or I'm, you know, while I'm working, I have YouTube music playing and uh, I've just actually been playing with it. And I was like, maybe I'll go back to Spotify, but do I really want to give up my YouTube premium? Nah, I don't want to give that up. Uh, what's up, uh, Miss McKelvin? I see you. Um, so once again, TBJ does have some new merch. He's official now. Um, make sure you guys go over there and check it out at shop.tallboy.us. TBJ got something to say. It comes in multiple colors. And then also, um, let's see. Oh, there you go. You can see it in the different colors right there. Yeah, got something for the ladies. There you go. Got the orange. Um, and, that, and that's what it would look like if you have it on. All right. And then also, uh, you got the TBJ um, journal. And then also TBJ in the building. All right. So make sure y'all check that out. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. 
Uh, let's see. Great show, Lab Tech Show family. Uh, tall boy, much appreciated. No, that's just what it is, and uh, hopefully you guys got some value out of it. And uh, that was the goal. Make sure you guys uh, support. Hit the like button. Tell a friend. Tell people what's going on um, over here. And, uh, yeah. Um, TBJ didn't really make an appearance. I ain't going to have you show him no love with emojis tonight because he didn't really do too much. He did do some stuff with Revis, but... Uh, yeah, we're going to get him. I'm going to have to talk to Revis and see if they can do a whole show together. Uh, y'all, would y'all like to see that with, uh, Revis and, um, TBJ, a whole show with them without me. Y'all better show me some love. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Sheila Baker says you always, uh, provide great info. Um, no, I mean, this is what it's all about. I mean, the goal is, Think about when you guys first met me, the ones that have been around for a while, right? You guys first met me and you guys had very little knowledge or no knowledge to tech, majority of you. And it was, these are tech rollouts that are happening every week. So what happened or what we rolled out or talked about today, this is what happened this week. And this stuff is rolling out and it's happening. What happened last week with Spotify, audio, audio books and Target Circle 360, that was last week, you know? So now we're on a whole new week and it, the tech is forever evolving. Companies are always releasing something. And if we don't stay on top of this stuff, um, we may lose out on a beneficial deal. We may say, hey, we're getting screwed and didn't know that they did a price hike. Um, we all saw what happened with AT&T and now we gave you um, an idea of a different platform with uh, Mint Mobile as opposed to probably going and just saying, I'm just going to pull my service out. Maybe you may want to go the prepay route. So we're just giving you options to see something different and we're just letting you stay abreast. So I thank you guys for, you know, willing to uh, tap in with me for an hour of your life on Wednesdays. Uh, that really definitely means a lot to me because I do a lot of extensive research just trying to see stuff that you guys may care about or things that are important. I know a lot of you do not care about video games. I know you don't really care about uh, government type issues or stuff that's dealing with um, AI. We do talk about AI, but we don't go into it as heavily as they promote it on these tech blogs. But this is no different from you getting your news from wherever you get it from. It's just more niche down to tech. So hopefully you guys get some value out of tonight's show. And I definitely thank you for supporting and uh, being a part of the family. All right. With that being said, um, let's see a quick recap and we are out of here. All right. Let's see. What do we have here? TBJ. Nope. Uh, uh tall boy. <laughs> All right. So tonight we discussed um, Waze and its new features. Um, we also discussed um, Airbnb, um, their new policy, and also Google Wallet, um, their new features as well. As well, right? So Google Wallet had that new feature of of uh, allowing you to add your tickets. I'm saying that right, your movie tickets and your boarding passes inside of, there we go. Did I do that right? Yep. All right. So yeah, uh, they allowed you to add your movie tickets and boarding passes uh, inside of Google Wallet. Airbnb said no more cameras after April 30th. And Waze said that they're going to roll out uh, five or six new features with uh, letting you know where uh, when speed has decreased. Uh, turn turnabouts, uh, sharp turns, um, parking garages, and where they are, if they have valet, and um, some other cool features with them as well. All right, so check that out. The articles are already in the description, so feel free to check those out, read it for yourself, and uh, like I said, share the show with some people. All right, it is the Lab Tech Show. Thank you guys so much, and uh, hopefully you guys got some value out of tonight. All right, what they say. Y'all be good, and uh, we'll see you guys, God willing, next week. You already know. Ow. Tall boy. Y'all have a good week. March 13th, half of March. We're almost spring break time. What y'all doing? Got to go. go.